Hi there folks and welcome to another episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. This is what I just picked up yesterday. And I've got it sitting on top of my wash tank right now because I'm going to wash it up before I work on it. You know the routine. Uh, this is a 1969 Johnson 20 horse. I think that's all it says. I don't think it's a seahorse or anything. Uh, actually, for 1969, it's in remarkably good shape from outward appearances. Now, yesterday when I brought this home, and I, last night I was late, I didn't have my camera set up. I wanted to show you, I should have showed you what was underneath this hood. <laughs> Makes my nose itch thinking about it. And it's, uh, it was full of like bedding. Uh, my, a mouse has lived in here, or a couple of mice have lived in here for a long time. Strangest thing though, the people I bought it from said they haven't rented it in about five years. It's just been sitting around collecting dust. And obviously mice, uh, I'm not sure how they got in. There, there are no holes. I don't know how they got in. This thing was snapped down tight. I unclicked it, lifted it off just like this, and I'm, I kid you not, squared off with the shape of the hood. You couldn't see the carburetor. Squared off with the shape of the hood and halfway down each side, full of bedding. I mean, I, you couldn't have been packed in there any better. It was crazy. But I had my shop back out and I just sucked it all up. And actually there was I'm pretty sure there was, I saw one for sure. I heard the second one, like two petrified mice in there that went thunk into my uh, shop back. But this doesn't even smell like mice, which is very unusual. So I don't know how long they'd been in there and how long that had happened or if the hood was partially propped open. But anyway, let's jump in and see what we got going on here because if I can get this running today, which is likely that I can, I'm going to stick it on that old sea nymph out there 69 sea nymph meets 69 johnson should be a good time let's see if it's got compression because if it does have compression i will make it run today uh, because i have carb kits for this i have water pumps for this and i have spark plugs for this and if the points i don't have i'm pretty sure i can file them or sand them and get them to make uh arc like it's brand new at least for a day on the water so let's dive in and get after it and see what we got going on with this outboard. For an old 1969 hood, I see a lot of these that are busted up, cracked up. Just got a little bit of chip paint on it, but it's in great shape. I don't know why they ever quit this design where they don't, where they don't have the rubber around it. They just have the, it sits right down and that, that rubber always gets nasty anyway. This is just fine. It could have kept doing this. Stuck with what works. Let's go ahead and check the compression out on this thing. You know, for, for this older motor, or outboard, the rubber is in amazing shape. All this rubber around here, no cracks. It almost seems like it was made a week ago. One thing that concerns me a little bit is these, both of these spark plugs were just finger tight. Looked like they were burning good. Wasn't that, isn't that strange? And it looks pretty oily in there, so maybe somebody just sprayed some uh, cylinder engine store, maybe. Might be pretty wet in there, so. All right, let's go ahead and check the compression. One thing I do like about these old motors is the simplicity. I mean, there's nothing crowded on these things. I do like them for that reason. Got a hundred pounds there. Dead on a hundred on the bottom cylinder. That'll play. I really need to get me a spark checker, but I'm pretty sure there's no spark there. I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull this full start cover off and take a look at them points. Cause I, I bet you they're old as all get out. So let's get to pulling that off. Well, I have no spark, 
great compression, but no spark. And I'm kind of wondering, everything's a little bit old in here. Uh, I see a little corrosion around that wire right there. That could be the culprit. There's a little bit of corrosion around both of these. Uh, I think what I'm going to try first though is I'm going to try sanding these points and make sure they're gapped properly. Just as a double check. Um, everything in here looks to be original, which is uh, very old, over 40 years old. Actually over 50 years old. I'm kind of curious uh, if it all is still going to work. Stuff back then was made better than stuff today when it comes to this type of items. I did unplug the kill switch just to make sure the kill switch wasn't grounding out and killing my spark. But uh, I think it's worth running a little piece of sandpaper in here and checking that gap. And we'll go from there, see if we can bring the spark back or not. All right, well, I took a piece of sandpaper, ran between the points. And all I did was take some 400 grit with just the spring tension of the points and rub that back and forth and you can see the marks. It, it seemed like it had quite a bit of corrosion there. And then I brought it up to the top to check the points gap. Points gap is really quite narrow. I can move that quite a bit. Open them up just a touch. That feels pretty good on that one. All right, there we go. That's adjusted. Let's see if uh, just sanding those points, getting them good and clean, and then adjusting the gap properly to see if I can get my spark back. Oh baby, oh baby, oh baby. Look at that. Spark, can you guys see that? Can you freaking see that? You can't see that. Let me get you down here. This is what makes me excited. It sends chills down my spine. Watch this. Look at that. We got spark back. Oh yeah. Just had to clean the points. If we got them on the bottom cylinder, boy, this thing will be running today. Let's see what we got here. I'm trying to get zapped by that one. It'll knock me on my butt. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's alive well guess what let's torque that flywheel back down just to see where this carburetor is set at i'm gonna just go ahead and turn this in until it's bottomed out to get an idea so there's half one Hmm. Not quite one and a quarter. So we'll go ahead and back this all the way off. I see no reason why this will not be running. Let's see, this one had a crack in it. Should be pretty simple. We'll take these two screws off. We'll set them right up here on top of the flywheel for safekeeping. We'll set that cover on top of the flywheel once again for safekeeping and then uh we'll go ahead and pop this little guy out hopefully not break anything there she goes popped right out let's get our wrench and take these two bolts loose Just a half inch wrench. Now I cut that fuel line because I'm going to put a new fuel line on it. I'm going to go ahead and pull this fuel pump off because you know it's old and dated and tired. And because, why? I have another fuel pump, brandy new, that I'm going to put on instead. I'm going to give myself a fighting chance. I don't like to be broke down in the water. I like to be the guy that tows other people in because my equipment is working. 
And when I break down, it's a surprise to me because I've done everything I could do to prevent a breakdown. Now a lot of you think this might just be a gasket that holds this in place. But you got to keep in mind that this little hole here is very important. Now I've seen people, like the last 35 horse I worked on, they left a screw loose and couldn't figure out what was wrong with it. Well, if it doesn't get the, the crankcase pressure going back and forth, back and forth from the piston going up and down, it doesn't actuate this diaphragm. And if it doesn't actuate this diaphragm, you will not pump any fuel. Didn't know if you knew that or not. New pump, old pump. Looks like we need to move a few things around because I want it to sit at the same angle this one sat at because that actually worked out pretty good. And this one's off about 90 where it needs to be for both of them, both pieces. So I'm going to adjust that and I'll be right back. All right, in order to change this, all I did was back these screws out that were here, backed them out, held everything together really tight, backed them out and put them in these two holes. Well, took them out of these holes, put them in these holes. And then took this very carefully, took this and lifted it up and rotated it 90 and stuck it back down and held it tight again and tightened it back up. That way everything stays in place. You don't have to try to remember where all your pieces went. So I got two screws here that are long, longer than these. Um, so to work with this pump, I should be able to still get this bad boy down in there just like that. Alrighty, I got them shortened up. I think I can make this all work. All right, I ended up using my two longer screws because it gave me a little more thread back in here than the original screws did. Also, I ended up using the original bottom plate because it was thinner and gave me more working room here. Uh, I think everything should work though. So we're gonna go ahead and put some new fuel line on it now. In order to get the fuel line off of the fuel connector to make it easier for you, you just take a 7 16 socket and drop this bolt out here. And this should come out. I think I'm going to cut my fuel line back here in order to get it out. The old fuel line is so rock hard. It doesn't like to flex or move to try to get it out. Well, that didn't want to give up. Now that we got all our fuel line, Connected, we can put this bolt right back in again. All right, as you can see here, I got my two new fuel lines hooked up here. Yes, this is clear fuel line, and I get this at Napa. And don't be afraid of the price. It's gonna be about four to five dollars a foot is what I've been paying for this stuff. But uh, it is for sure Nice to see when fuel's pumping through here, whether there's bubbles in it or no fuel. You can see it when it's going through there. To give you some indication of something that's going right or wrong when it comes to your fuel delivery system. Let's go look at that carburetor. Now, as I've said before, these carburetors are among the simplest carburetors out there. There's not a lot to them. But there's a couple of key things you want to look for if you want them to run and work and perform like they should. We're going to go ahead and pull this bowl off first. I apologize in advance, my surgeon's table here is absolutely disgusting. I've been rearranging and straightening up my garage a little bit, or my shop, or whatever you want to call this place I do all the outboard doctoring on. This is one of the areas I got to clean up yet. Well, that's not bad. A little old leftover two-stroke oil there, much like what I saw on the spark plugs. Now this is a 1969, and I just did a video I'm, I'm working on right now. I had a 1979, and then I also did a 1985, was it 85? No, a 79, it was a 7935 horse. I'm sorry, it was a 7935 horse, exact same carb kit. Night, and I also just worked on and got running yesterday, and a 20 horse, 1985, exact same carb kit. This is one of those situations, if you got a good thing going, don't mess with it. And that's what Johnson did. They didn't mess with it for a long time. Were they crazy efficient? No. Were they crazy reliable? You bet. That's why you and I are sitting here 
making a video and you're watching a video of me working on a carburetor that's built in, in an engine that's built in 1969 that's still gonna run when I'm done. Boy, this is some kind of clean. One jet I want you to make sure you don't forget about. One of the most important jets if you want to get some RPMs out of this thing. Whoa, that's tight. Let me see if I can get a wrench on that. There we go. Wasn't that tight. It's just tight enough. So this has a little jet down in there. You should be able to see clear round light through that hole. And we do. All right, we got her all cleaned up. We're going to put uh, get all the new parts in it now. Which don't consist of a whole lot on these motor or these outboards as I've shown you before. First thing we're going to do is put the new new uh, needle and seat in it for the float. Alright, we got the carburetor all back together. Everything appears to work like it should. Let's put it back on the old uh, power head here, intake gasket here. Put our gasket in place. I'm just going to mock this up here real quick because I want to run my fuel line here. We'll go ahead and slip this on. All right, looks like it's setting pretty good there without being kinked. I go ahead and put a zip tie on it. That's beautiful. Now let's go ahead and get the old uh, nuts and washers on here. Righty, carburetor's getting tight. I'm gonna have to fix this later on. I, I can, I think I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna pull this off and see if I can 3D print me a new piece. I think that'll be very doable. Okay, we're going to back this off one and a half turns. I got it bottomed out gently here. There's half, one, one and a half. I'm just going to make it so it's horizontal across here. Because then you can go lean, rich, lean, rich type of situation. That's what this knob down here normally did, but here. But uh, I've got a little bit of work to do there. As you can see here, this one was broken. It's aluminum. It was overcast, on the over molded or overcast over this brass rod. Um, you can see that it's knurled here. I was able to grind through it here to get enough relief. Grind through it right here to get enough relief to let the knurl let go. But I'm thinking I might be able to do something, maybe out of 3D printed plastic ABS, and then maybe drill a small cross hole to pin it so it has some strength, so I can actually recreate that. All right, so the carburetor install is now complete. I want to pay attention to this tiller handle here. Here again, I've got another tiller handle that's super stiff. I mean, that thing is turning so tight. And usually what happens is the grease in here gets really, really gnarly and will not let that handle move like it needs to. I'm going to show you how to service that. Pick it up like this. There's a Phillips screw. Get you in the shot here. There's a Phillips screw right here. It's going to have a spring on it. Usually you can just back this right out. There'll be a spring underneath here. If it's springy at all, and grease might have it all bound up. Usually what happens is this grease in here gets really sticky and tired. Or in this case, no grease at all. Boy, this whole thing just turns really stiff. Maybe we just take this whole thing apart. See what's causing our grief here. Well, it still turns stiff after I pulled the handle off, so... We're going to go ahead and split this. There's a screw, a flathead screw here 
and there's another one right here. We're going to find out where the binding's happening and we're going to get it lubricated. Looks like there's one on top and bottom here. As it turns out, this shaft that went through here was tight. The bushings that it runs through was just sticky, tight, nasty. It's a mess. So I'm going to see if I can get all this cleaned off of it and uh, slide it back through there with some fresh grease. And then I think it'll remove freely. That's what I'm hoping. Alrighty, it's time to remove the gearbox. Remove this access cover. There's going to be two flathead screws in here. They have a, one has a, they both have like a socket on them. They also both have a slot. And you might have to use the socket depending on how stuck they are. Oh, and that's pretty stuck. So I'm going to get the old ratchet out. You're going to want to pull this bolt all the way out. As you can see here, this one's pretty covered in uh, soot. Just because how nasty this one is, I'm going to go ahead and pull both of them out. Because chances are... I'm going to have a little trouble getting this gearbox to come off if that's a little bit tight. Sometimes what you may have to do uh, is kind of pull the top one loose and you can pry on it just like that. Now I've got it completely loose, which is great. Now I know this is going to come off a lot easier. And we've got four bolts to take loose to get the gearbox off. There's two on this side. And two on the other side, and that's it. You guys might be asking yourself, why are you doing this over your your wash barrel? What you've been cleaning your motors in? Well, all my engine stands are full. <laughs> so, and this one I'm gonna get be able to knock through pretty quick and get it on a boat, do some testing with it. Don't forget that bolt. <laughs> it's early yet. I'm not quite awake. Isn't that funny how she falls out once you get that loose. <laughs> it pops right out. Easy peasy. We're going to jump back to the handle real quick. I want to show you some of the stuff I did uh, to service this. This has a, a shaft that runs from here to here with a little gear paw on the end of it. And there's another one on the other side that goes from here back to this gear back under here. Well, this thing was turning really stiff. Uh, way stiffer than it should have been. Anyway, I've got it cleaned up now and working right. But what I did is you got to pull. There's a flathead screw here with a nut on the back side. And there's two screws underneath this collar right here. In order to get to that, there is a... Right here, there's a Phillips head screw here. It could be a flathead, but most of them I've seen are Phillips. Back that out, the handle comes off. You can slide, carefully slide this collar off. And then... There's two screws here you can take loose, and this handle will split in half, and you can take it off. Then, we'll get you a close-up shot here. Now, as you can see here, there is a slotted screw right here. Back that screw all the way out is what I did. And then this shaft that it's connected to that runs underneath here will slide out. Now, in the case of this outboard, this handle turning really stiff was not due to grease in here. This basically didn't have any grease in it. It could have contributed, but it didn't have any grease in it. What, can, what was the biggest problem is it was through the bushings that run through here. It was all gummed up and uh, corroded. So I was able to work it out, clean it out, put grease back in it. And now she works like it's supposed to. It's got, you know, works good. Anyway, that's all I did to that. And as you can see here, this isn't the original screw. Uh, somebody else had put this on there. It's actually not a bad screw uh, to, to use with a lock nut. Uh, most of these had like a plastic screw. Uh, the newer ones have plastic. Maybe the older ones had metal. Uh, so you could adjust the... Basically all you need this for, in my opinion, from what I've seen, is just to adjust the stop down at the bottom so it doesn't... Uh, idle too low and shut itself off. So you can set the low end idle there with that. Anyway, I thought we'd jump back on that and show you how I put that back together. And I've greased everything up, tightened everything back up. And uh, this here is split in half. So depending on how tight you tighten this, you can put enough friction on here to make this handle move a little stiffer up and down. It's personal preference there. So 
See, now it'll hold itself up. You don't want to over tighten this. Is this just aluminum? But yeah, now I've got it stiffer there. So it's not going to flop around. All righty, let's go ahead and change the, well, drain the oil out of the gearbox and hopefully it has oil in it. Well, it looks like it's good, clean, thick oil. Well, that's awesome. That's a real good sign. Well, let's pull this uh, impeller housing off and see what we got going on there. I have to tell you, this uh, old motor has really impressed me with the quality and condition of the rubber pieces that have been on this thing. I would like to know how this person actually stored this uh, outboard in the off season or anytime he wasn't using it because typically the everything rubber is deteriorated on something that's over 50 years old and my guess is it, it may have been all replaced on a regular basis that's why it's in the condition it's in which is kudos to the kudos to them for doing such an awesome job Now I'm going to show you this impeller. It's got some wear on it. But this is what you got to watch for. See that right there? Monster crack. These could break off and plug up your cooling system and overheat your motor before you realize what even happened. There's a little dinky drive pin right here on the shaft. We'll pull that out. We can lift this plate off. Now we can pressure test this to make sure it doesn't leak. The bearings and everything, the shaft is tight in there. Really, really good shape there. Every, so far, so good on everything I see. I think we'll be putting this in the tank pretty soon and take, giving her a test run. This here we can get it installed by turning it clockwise. Now we saw me put the pin in, pin in, applying slight down pressure, turning clockwise, looking from the top down, and that impeller will sneak right in there. And there it is. You saw I put a little marine grease on it just to help things not start up dry. Now since these screws came out a little tight, I'm gonna put just a dab of Never Seize on here to make sure. The next person that gets to service this, if it's myself or somebody else, doesn't have a problem getting them out. Okay, with the water pump installed, or water pump impeller, I should say, installed. We're going to put a little lube around this o-ring here. We, as you can see here, I've already cleaned up the brass connector. Uh, all this little bit of grease helps things slide back together without forcing it. This brass connector, I've already tightened up the bottom screw up top here. We've got the o-ring back on. We'll glob some grease on the end of this. So we're ready to slide it back together and bolt it on. We're just about done with this bad boy.
while we're working on this old motor, I want to take a moment to show you guys what you probably should have along with you, just for breakdown purposes. Uh, you got a prop like this that has a pin drive. And what I mean by a pin drive is there's a pin like this that goes through your prop shaft and drives and sits, you know, this slot right here holds a pin and that's what drives your prop. Well, it's always nice to have, these things are easily serviced on the water. Now, granted, don't drop anything. If you get yourself to the shoreline, which is better, and do this maintenance. But uh, these shear pins are designed, this prop, prop drive pin is designed to shear in case the prop hits something damaging like a log or a rock or, you know, really heavy, thick mud that it would normally do damage to the rest of the drivetrain. This is to save that. Uh, I would always suggest that when I have one of these pen drives, I'll take an extra couple of pens with me, uh, like two pens and two cotter key, cotter pens, in order to make sure uh, I don't break, if I do have, have something, I'm not stranded out on the lake. This is cheap insurance, and these are the only tools you typically need to do that, because this nut goes on not crazy tight. This little eight inch crescent wrench here opens up big enough to fit. And this, this needle nose pliers are great for pulling out the old cotter pin and then you put a new one in. Now you can reuse these cotter pins several times before they break, but it's just as easy to put. It's actually a lot easier just to stick a new one in. They're very inexpensive. And uh, I'll leave a link below. I'll have these for sale on eBay. Uh, I did some pricing on these pins, drive pins, and they're, they're a little bit ridiculous on the expensive part. Uh, I make these here in-house. And I'll sell these as a pair. So check out the link below in the description of where you can go and buy these from me. And I'll ship them to you, USPS snail mail. Um, you let me know, you know, there'll be so much per pair. Let me know how many you want uh, on eBay. Go ahead and make that purchase and I'll get those shipped out to you right away. Anyway, because, and the reason I'm doing that is because I found these things to be quite expensive to buy one or two of these. Uh, and I'll be able to sell you this set for cheaper than you can buy any one on, uh, that I've found so far on the internet. So let me know, and we'll get after that, get that out to you. Uh, so that I, just, I just wanted to touch base on that because this will leave you stranded faster than anything. One little mistake, hitting one little something, and next thing you know, you're stranded. But the good thing is, chances are, this is what this is designed to do is this pin will shear before you most likely even damage your aluminum prop. All right, let's get back to putting this on the 20 horse we're working on and get it in the test tank and let's see how it runs. Now for the install, obviously it's quite simple. I put grease on the shaft and then I put uh, the cross pin in, the drive pin in. Then you just line it up and just slide it on there. Falls in place. We'll put our nut on there. And keep in mind, this nut isn't tightened up tight. It's just tightened up to line up with a hole and take any free play out of it. Like right there, I just barely snugged that up and I'm tightened up onto a hole. I can stick my brand new cotter pin back in here, just like that, and we'll flare it, you know, bend it open. And now you're installed. Ready to go for the next go round. All right, we got her in a tank. I got the outboard running here, 
But I want to show you a little something that you may not notice. When I pump this thing up with fuel, you can see it's pumping up. But I do have a little bit of a fuel leak. There's a gasket in here that's probably not quite right. But if you didn't have the fuel leak, I'm sucking a little air, I'm pretty sure, obviously. Uh, I'm going to show you what you can, which is nice to be able to see with this clear fuel line that you couldn't see if it was a black fuel line. Say if it wasn't leaking fuel, but it was still sucking air for some reason. Let me fire this up and show you what I mean. Starves it for fuel, won't go. But there is enough fuel to make it idle. Huh, not really. It actually just ran out. So, anyway, brand new fuel pump, something's not quite right with it. I'm gonna put uh, another one on and see if I can cure that issue. on it, no air bubbles. We can rev her up. show you guys how easy this starts. I'm going to put it to the start position. I'm going to give it just a just a little bit rollover, not much. Starts up real nice. Okay folks, we're going to give it a whirl. This is a cold water start, or cold water, cold engine start. I haven't done this yet. Started up this morning, got it running. I just installed my kill switch. I'll run you through that real quick here in a minute. I uh, showed you what it was before. But yeah, I think I'm going to choke, we're going to pump it up. You can see all the gas going through all my beautiful clear fuel line. There we go, we're full. I'm going to pull the choke and give it a rip. I was going to show you what I did to the kill switch here. I've got 
two wires. I ended up splicing on some connections so I could still take this on and off. And so I could unplug it. The original wires were all cracked. So I put some new uh, coated wires on here. They're marine grade wires. And then I got this, what I showed you in the package earlier, the kill switch here. Got that installed. And looks all kinds of factory there, don't it? Looks pretty spiffy. But uh, yeah, we're good to go now. The kill switch works. And the motor runs like a top, as you saw in the video. And uh, mark another one up for victory for the old 1969 Johnson 20 horse. Now the interesting thing about this is the only thing I did with this thing is vacuum it out. Uh, I'll show you a glimpse into my shop back. It was empty before I started on this thing and I sucked all that mouse stuff I talked about at the beginning of the video out. And uh, actually I think there's still a, I think there's a mouse head or leg down in there yet that I haven't gotten out. But we're going to run this bad boy. So I think now that I've got it all running good it's time to we might actually clean it up a little bit and make it look respectable before, because you know the Johnson has got to look respectable before it visits the sea nymph. That's just proper etiquette. Well, there you have it, folks. Pay, give me the rundown on this thing. What I've done to it. 150 bucks is what I paid for it. Sight unseen. Not really sure of the condition. Hadn't ran for over five years. We tinker with it. I walked you through step by flip and step everything I did on this thing. No secrets. I put a, another fuel pump on it. I put a carb kit in it. The link to the descriptions for all that stuff will be below. Don't be afraid to follow them and buy exactly what I bought so you'll have the exact results that I had. Um, it's like an 8 or $9 kill switch from Napa. Somewhere in that range. A couple handful of uh, little fittings. Like I said, links for everything will be below. But uh, this thing, it's, a, it's impressive. It runs good. It tacks up way more RPMs than it should. But we'll see what it does behind the old sea nymph. And uh, it's a little 14-foot boat. I think it weighs around 600 pounds without me in it. Weighs around 1,600 pounds with me in it. Okay, maybe not quite that much, but it, I, add, I add a considerable amount of weight to it. But uh, we're going to see how fast this thing goes. So make sure you stay tuned to the next video. It's going to be in the next video or two. Uh, we're going to get out in the lake, and we're going to give this thing a shakedown, run. We'll probably burn about five gallons of fuel through it and make sure everything's working good and have a lot of fun out in the lake cruising. We're going to get you some awesome drone footage, both trailing and beside it, and might have a secret little surprise for you guys. So stay tuned. Uh, I'm working with a company. They're supposed to be sending me some stuff. So I can do a little giveaway with you guys. So make sure you check into the next few videos. I'm not sure which video the giveaway is going to hit. So subscribe, like, hit that notification bell, and get out there and have some fun. If you're not having fun, you got to ask yourself why not. And don't be afraid to look down below this video and check out the t-shirts. I don't care whether you buy them or not. I would, if you do, that helps me. If you don't, that's fine. I'm not, I'm not in the merchandise business. I'm in the playing with these things business. So with that being said, if it ain't broke, fix it till it is, and I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm going out. I've been out. Okay, right. still here.